What's up, spell slingers and lovers of all things art and flavor? Havoc here, and today we're going to be doing something different on the channel again. But before we talk about it, I have some news. As you can see, my channel hit our first milestone, 100 subs. First, I want to say thank you to all who have subbed over the last few weeks. It's been amazing. And to show my appreciation, I'm doing a giveaway. So keep watching and I'll tell you how to enter to win and exactly what I'm giving away. But anyways, back to the video. When I first started this channel, which was just a few weeks ago, like I said, and I was thinking about what kind of content I wanted to put out, of course my mind went immediately to the deck techs and covering this new brawl format and a host of other ideas, one of which is what I'm going to do today. I had this idea in my mind because one of the things that I love the most about magic is the art. I've been known to make a deck solely around the art because I like the art of a certain card and I'm a total sucker when it comes to art, especially like cover art on books. I know they say you can't judge a book by its cover, but that's pretty much standard practice for me because I love art. Now don't get me wrong here, I have no background in any artistic field. I am definitely not an artist myself, and this topic is really completely subjective. So keep that in mind as we go through these cards and these art pieces and the flavor text. And although I'll be ranking them, this is entirely off of my taste in art and in writing. Now the great thing about doing this video is that these cards have nothing to do with power and toughness or keywords or how broken the card is or if the card can be used and constructed or if it's a limited bomb we are grading the non-competitive aspects of magic cards and we're in dominaria and in my opinion this has got to be one of the best sets to come out in a long time in power level in art in flavor and nostalgia i really think they hit a home run with this set the art and flavor is off of the charts with these cards, and there are so many throwback statements and little details in the art that us old players remember as card references. I mean, for example, look at this card, Weight of Memory. We have Joyra, Karn, and Teferi in what looks like to be a pretty heated confrontation here. And then the flavor text on top of it says, In lives that have stretched for centuries, there are bound to be a few awkward silences. I love it! And this is just a tip of the hat that all the older players who remember this story and were just bursting with excitement when we heard that we're going back to Dominaria. If you were like me when you heard the news and you're probably asking all sorts of questions, will we be reunited with the crew? What happened to the Weatherlight? What new heroes will we be introduced to? Another example of how jam-packed this set is with flavor, let's look at another card. Everyone's favorite legendary frog spirit Yargal. And I'm sure the only reason why they gave us this legend without any keywords or abilities is so they could fit the flavor text on it. It says, when Belzenlock's Lieutenant Yar Cool grew too ambitious, the Demon Lord transformed him into a maggot. The frog that ate the maggot grew and grew until a ravenous spirit burst from its body. Wow. Now, if this isn't an attempt at humor for Wizards R&D, I don't know what is. Everything from this creature's name to his power and toughness to his creature type is just hilarious. But there's also a story being told here and a character developing. Now, not the story or the character of the frog, but for Belzenlock. We see just how cruel and demonic he can be, and that plays a part for the story as well as many other flavor texts that we see on the black cards. So hopefully now you can see what this set is, and just how difficult this was to narrow down all of the art and all of the flavor into a top 10 list for each. Now I'll do my best to explain why I like a certain quote or why I like a certain piece of art, but remember for the most part art is subjective. And this is my list. If you don't like it, make your own and, and tell me what it is. But let's start with my top 10 favorite flavor texts of all the cards in Dominaria. Number 10, we have Damping Sphere. The flavor text reads, a Thrawn relic. It has spent 10,000 years doing absolutely nothing. I love this. Simple, elegant, and hilarious. This text embodies everything that this artifact does, which is basically summed up in one word, 
No. You think of the combo player getting his spells lined up to go off? Mm, no. You think of the player with Gaia's Cradle out about to tap for a bazillion mana? Damping Sphere says no. I love the card. I love the text. Well done. Number nine is Steel Leaf Champion. Its flavor text reads, One eye open to see the truth of the world, one eye covered to gaze at the goddess within. Now, this is what I would call an inspiring text. And maybe it's just my affinity for honor and righteousness, but these words really speak to me, not just in a way that inspires me, but also it allows me to understand this character, this character that has no name, and I'm sure that this is what he would prefer. He's just a champion in service to his goddess, and I love it. A lot of story being told here in very few words. Number eight is Short Sword. Its flavor text reads, sometimes the only difference between a martyr and a hero is a sword. And this is taken from Captain Cissé's own memoirs, wise words from Captain Cissé herself, and how apt. This is a message of hope and courage in my mind, and the fact that this was said or written by Captain Cissé herself, it's just dripping with nostalgia for those of us who remember our captain valiantly fighting off the Phyrexian horde at the bow of the Weatherlight. This is a simple equipment and a simple text, but the implications are both deep and profound. Number seven is Fire Elemental. Its flavor text reads, the best way to learn from a book on pyromancy is to burn it from Jaya Ballard. This is a creature that's been reprinted into Oblivion, so although you might not be happy to see it in your draft or sealed pool, it does give wizards an opportunity to tell a story. And when I read this text, my reaction was basically, <laughs> yeah, that's about right. It's one of those subtly hilarious comments that tells you everything you need to know about Jaya Ballard. Number six is Divination, and Divination's flavor text says, Half of your studies will be learning the laws of magic, the other half will be bending them. This is Naru Miha, Master Wizard. Another reprint here, and so copy everything that I just said about Fire Elemental, about the reprint, but this is also a throwback to those who remember just how ridiculous and haphazard the wizards on Dominaria were. Especially those who resided on the island of Teleria where all they did was bend the laws of magic, which, correct me if I'm wrong, eventually led to their downfall. Number five is Yogmoth's Vile Offering. Its flavor text reads, Centuries ago, a mad god offered a simple trade. Now this one will be making a visit on the art countdown as well, but let's focus on the very few words in the flavor text area of the card. This, of course, is referring to the deal that Gerard made to have Yogmoth resurrect Hannah at the cost of Urza's head. This is one of the most epic moments in all of Magic's history, and I love the flavor text here because it isn't overshadowing. Instead, it pulls the reader in. We see the art, the head in hand, the feminine figure floating before the massive construct that we have to assume is Yogmoth, and the flavor text does exactly what it's supposed to do. It adds flavor. It made me ask, what is going on here? I know that this is a big deal. It's life altering and perhaps more so, but I wanna know more. Well done, whoever this author is. Number four is Muldratha, the Grave Tide. Her flavor text reads, my child grew from rot and ruin, yet she bloomed from Multani. Here we have a mutated monstrosity of a creature that's in the colors of rot and growth and magic. The flavor text here tells us of her origin though, she's Multani's offspring. Another nostalgic legendary creature from the old days. Now Multani is back in this set, but with this we get to see the next generation a bit and both cards work really well together by manipulating the graveyard. And the flavor text only adds to their bond that we see here. Another short text here, but undoubtedly powerful. Number three is Eviscerate, which reads, Fear the dark if you must, but don't mistake the sunlight for safety. By Josu Vess. Here we have a quote from Liliana's undead brother, and what a zombie thing to say here. In this set, the white theme is mainly playing around this idea of the Knights of Banalia, or New Banalia, who are all about the light and stained glass windows. And I can't see the telltale inlaid stained glass on the knight's armor, 
But I would bet this is a Banalish Warrior, which makes this text so much more disheartening, which is exactly what you want on a black card. Number two is Banalish Honor Guard, which reads, the true measure of all heroes is not what they achieve, but who they inspire from the triumph of Gerard. Now this text, oh, I think I'm gonna write this on the whiteboard in my office. I love it so much. You want to talk about inspiring texts here? Well, consider me inspired. In my professional life, I'm a, a leader in many ways, and this just speaks to me. So many times we can get bogged down with this results-driven mentality, and we often forget of the more important and less tangible results of working with people. This quote just jumped off the card at me, and I'll be reminded of this every time I play the Honor Guard. And the number one flavor text, in my opinion, in all of Dominaria is Lyra Dawnbringer, whose flavor text simply reads, you are not alone, you never were. Now, this literally makes me want to cry. I read this and I get all choked up inside. She's the Dawnbringer and with her comes hope and light. Lyra is here to rescue you, not only from your darkness, but also from despair and isolation. She is hope incarnate. She is the embodiment of all good in Sarah's host. Wow, what a card and what a text here. It speaks to me on so many levels, and for this reason, Lyra Dawnbringer receives the Havoc Award for the best flavor text in all of Dominaria. Good job, whoever wrote this flavor text, very good job. Like I said, so much flavor and so much story being told on these little pieces of cardboard here, and we're only halfway through this art and flavor review. Now get your eyeballs ready to see what the visual department has cooked up for us in this historic set. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Number 10 on the art side of things is Vicious Offering, which is illustrated by Anthony Palumbo. I love the use of light in this art piece. The background is very bright and contrasts nicely with the subject of the card, casting a shadow over his face and body. And we see the same colors emanating from the burning on his chest. This man looks like a willing sacrifice, but that willingness does little to numb the pain as we see the anguish on his face. This is a gruesome work of art here, and it looks amazing in foil. Number nine is On Sarah's Wings, illustrated by Johannes Voss. This is a common theme among the Banalish Knights, like I said before, and a lot of cards, the iconic stained glass is always displayed prominently. But I love the sense of motion in this art and how the wings coming off the wall are enveloping this knight. The bright colors of the wings contrasting with the dark blues and blacks just do it for me. Well done, Johannes. Number eight is Cast Down, illustrated by Bastian de Harm. Another great piece of art on a black removal spell here. Now the card itself is solid removal, but the art just puts it over the top for me. Even in the non-foil copies, Bastian was able to create something that looks like it's shimmering, like gold on the card. I love the ethereal wisps of the man's body melting away like a leaf being obliterated by a forest fire. Cast Down has amazing art. Number seven is Chainer's Torment, illustrated by Vincent Prock. This is our first saga on the countdown. Now, I don't know what the deal is here. I saw a few people on the interwebs saying that this was the worst art of all the sagas, and I don't know what they're looking at. I said this in my set review of the black cards that this reminds me of some art for Alien Covenant and I loved that and I love this. At the top of the art, the Mirari is depicted, an artifact of unspeakable power that empowers people and destroys them at the same time. And considering the card's name, Chainer is the one being tormented and controlled by the Mirari. I'm not too high on this card for playing it competitively, but the art is spot on. Number six is Ancient Animus, illustrated by Titus Lunter. Karn vs. Multani, who wins? Again, great use of backlighting here and the fog rolling in under their feet as they brawl is a nice touch. You get a sense of motion in this epic duel and the light emanating from Multani's eyes and mouth 
only intensify the rage seen in his expression. But with all of that, I just love this art style that looks like it's a half sketch, half painting thing going on here. Great job, Titus. Number five is Helm of the Host, illustrated by Igor Kyriluk. Igor, if I got that wrong, I'm sorry. Speaking of that kind of sketchy, you know, imperfect type of art, Igor kicks it up a notch here, and this is just a fantastic piece of art. The light and the lines running up to the top of the frame give a mystic feel to the helm, and the bright blue eyes invoke this feeling of power. You can't really see the details in the eyes and all the other copies on, on the card, but on a blown up copy, that's where my eyes go to first. It's not the shape of her face or the rippling brows of her helm going from face to face, but it's the eyes, and I like that. Number four is Joda, Archmage Eternal, illustrated by Yang J. Choi. Speaking of eyes, I kind of like how all these are sort of flowing together, and again, my eyes go directly to Joda's eyes in this piece. But this is very different from the Helm of the Host in that Joda is looking back at you where the lady in the helm was looking just below eye line. It's subtle, but it communicates something completely different. Joda is looking back at you or perhaps through you as he sees both your present and your future. And unlike the helm art, your eye wants to travel around this picture to look at all the colors and his flowing robe and then to his scepter. And add to that, you have that ball of energy backlighting his hair that seems to float weightlessly rather than succumb to the gravity. It just adds a beautiful touch of light and edging to Joda's head and face. I keep looking at this to make sure that he isn't actually moving through the air on me. It's just breathtaking. Very good job on this art. Number three is Syncopate, illustrated by Tommy Arnold. What an epic piece of art here. The picture fits perfectly to the flavor text and what the card is doing. It also communicates the power of Teferi as he counters this spell without even looking at it. I love the ripples of the fragmented spell that grow larger and larger as your eyes travel from right to left. I don't know if there's much more I can say about this one. Just look at it. If you're a blue player, then here's your computer background for the next, I don't know, forever. Congrats, and well done, Tommy Arnold. Number two is Yagmoth's Vile Offering, illustrated by Noah Bradley. I told you we'd be back here, so just take the time to appreciate this beautiful piece of art by Noah Bradley. Again, as your eyes travel around this picture, we see the decapitated head in Gerard's hand and the instrument that did the decapitation in the other. Hannah floats before the maw of this great and powerful Yawgmoth. But what I love the most about this piece of art is how he conveyed the despair and hopelessness of the entire situation. This picture makes me ask questions like, why did Gerard do this? And how vile is this Phyrexian god to propose something like this? And are there any depths a man's heart won't sink to in order to be reunited with his love? Wow. Great story and a great way to depict this. And finally, number one in the art category is The History of Benalia. Again, illustrated by Noah Bradley. Noah hits another one out of the park with this one. It is awesome. I'll just let the music play for a little bit while we take this in. The use of color and symmetry here does everything that you want a card like this to convey. This is telling the history of the Banalish Order, and really in this one piece you learn everything there is to know about who they are, what they represent, and what they're fighting for. They are good, they fight for the light, they are proud of their lineage and what they stand for. I want to be a knight of New Benalia so bad! But anyways, I love this art and I heard rumors that this might be coming out in a tapestry and if that's the case, I'm definitely getting one for sure. And so, the Havoc Award for the best art in Dominaria has to go to Noah Bradley. Good job, Noah. 
So let me ask you, what art and flavor text did you like in the set? This is the great thing about art and literature and movies and such. You're supposed to talk about it, not just consume it. Please leave your comments about what your favorite piece of art is or what your favorite flavor text in the set is so we can start the conversation. Now it's time to talk about the giveaway. Since this is a channel dedicated to EDH and Brawl, it's incumbent upon me to give something out that would be good for both. So to celebrate us reaching this 100 sub milestone, I'm giving away a copy of Muldratha, the Gravetide. She's got to be one of the most anticipated commanders to brew around, and she will also be the topic of one of my next top commander episodes. So click the link in the description, and it will tell you how to sign up for the giveaway. The giveaway will be running for one week, so you have until my next Monday's video to enter. So what are you waiting for? Go enter to win, and good luck. Once again, my name is Havoc, and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It helps out a lot. And if you haven't subbed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to get notified when new Commander content comes out, and when I'll be giving away more free stuff in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.